Welcome to our webinar today. Um, while we're waiting for some people to log in still, um, like we do with every webinar, um, I'm still testing out this idea of putting the webcam on. But uh, you can see me there, but once in a while I will be referring to my notes, so just be aware that I am looking away to look at my notes. <laughs> okay. Um, that's number one. Number two is that um, this, re this webinar is being recorded, so I'll be sending you the um, the PDF as well as a recording. Um, there's obviously quite a few new faces or new names on this on this webinar today. Um, the, the 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 slides that I'll be going through um, and the slides that you'll be receiving, you'll see that there are quite a few hidden slides. Obviously, because of time constraints, I had to cut back on some of the content. But excuse me to, to explain to you more when, in, when you get the PDF that uh, to help you more with more information. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, let me just uh, minimize this here so I can always see myself. Where, um, oh yeah. Um, to get started, let me ask you this question. How many of you um, are considered as key person or as a, as a key person or key personnel in your company? Um, this is something that one of the emails I came across this week. It says, um, you know, for example, we've got our annual um, conference coming up at Sun City. And it was quite interesting to look at this email. And it says that colleagues attend the same events frequently, such as national or international conferences, but having key personnel in one place um, poses a business continu continuity risk. So obviously unforeseen events such as accidents are uh, a potential concern. So for example, many people like to travel together, employees in the same teams, personnel with the same similar skills and, uh, and or uh, potential successes. But um, so the solution here is obviously for, for travel arrangements is to fly at different times, make different, uh, make use of different airlines, uh, limit key members to a two per, per vehicle, for example, allocate travel uh, companions across divisions, businesses, and obviously units and advisor offices and things like that. But why am I bringing this up? And I think you can see my little subtitle there. We're talking about investing offshore or outside South Africa. And the focus as such is geographic diversification. So I'm using that example. So if you can relate to what we mean by diversification, by spreading the risk, if that makes sense to you. That's number one. And number two, I think it's also important that, you know, if you don't go to a national conference, you're going to miss out on opportunities. Opportunities to obviously um, learn more new information, gain, gain um, more or new knowledge and experience but also the opportunity to network. So it's missed opportunities. And that's my gist of my presentation today. Uh, investing offshore provides you with um, uh, spreading your risk, geographic diversification, and obviously taking advantage of investment opportunities outside South Africa. So um, just to get going into it, here's a quote from uh, Fujio um, Muterari. He was the, um, uh, the, well, he is the chairman of Canon, until 1998, he was the president of Canon in, in, in the USA. But he has a quote from him, he says, diversification and globalization are the keys to the future. Um, so that's just a little quote to just put something into context. Um, so let's bring it into it. Let's look at the, the current situation for a lot of people. And hope Uncertainty, um, corruption, uh, being closer to home, more worried about um, economic uncertainty, the economy slowing down, and things like that, labor unrest. Uh, we're talking about high, high unemployment, this lack of skills. Um, yeah, it might be a concern for you. Um, but bottom line, perception is reality. So if I had to bring us into a nutshell, you know, funds, be it your shares, be it your property, whatever the case might be. And we all know that, obviously, you have to be watching that basket very, very closely. And uh, the old uh, cliche.
That's number one. Number two is if you are uh, keeping your head in the sand, um, you're missing out on opportunities. Obviously, you understand what is your financial objectives, what are your goals, why do you want to go overseas, why do you want to invest overseas. Yes, ge geographic diversification. Uh, which is dependent um, and also having a broad um, investment understand or broad, broad theme understanding of those themes we, look, we talk about different sectors just now and opportunities that might present but also you have to consider things like income tax and capital gains tax on potential returns in all those different offshore markets so, you know, investing offshore, especially on the equity side, you know, there's always a risk. There's no such thing as a risk-free investment. Um, so your number one goal always is to protect and obviously protect your capital, but also you want to grow uh, your, your, your capital. So risk is controlled through a dis disciplined and systematic uh, risk management, call it that way, risk management approach to the markets. And you do that through... Um, obviously understanding the market, so it's through research and obviously analysis. So that's a current situation for a lot of people. A lot of people might not know what to do. Um, so the, the ideal situation would be in a situation where we've got a structured portfolio, be it asset, uh, a, a ideal asset allocation across all the different asset classes. But also if I look at, excuse me, let me just grab some water. Your strategy, based on your risk profile, and we talk about different buckets, um, your, your term, you know, if you, want, uh, you need some income for the next year, next two years, whatever the case might be, there's different strategies that you need to incorporate. But also, we're going to talk about today in the situation where you're diversifying your portfolio globally. Okay, so that's the ideal situation you want to be. You want to be a global investor. You want to uh, be local, but act global. Okay, so how do we get there? Um, what are we proposing? <clears throat> Excuse me. There are different ve investment vehicles to go offshore. So number one, we've got exchange traded products. We're talking about local exchange traded products. You can have uh, exposure to offshore markets, number one. Secondly, obviously, you've got, uh, and we will be talking about uh, different funds available here in South Africa. We've got Global Unit Trust. And then the third option, you've got uh, offshore trading account, and that's either through your offshore allowance account or through your asset swap. And I'm going to go into more detail what I'm proposing around that. So we talk about exchange traded funds. Um, you want to buy RAND denominated exchange traded funds. The idea there is no money, no money is going offshore, so it won't affect your offshore allowance. Okay. So uh, ETFs we've spoken about last week and we've done it before. Uh, allows you as an investor to have access to a basket rather than a single share. So I might look at uh, spreading your risk that way, first of all. So ETFs are, are passively managed, um, and obviously the shares themselves are, are actively traded into today. But the funds themselves are uh, passively managed. You had PSG, you got, uh, you got two um, options to get involved with the exchange traded funds. You can either, if you've got an uh, equity trading account, they trade exactly like shares, and um, so um, that's one way of getting involved with them. Um, and obviously there's a whole list available on our website and highlight the two uh, companies that provide uh, exposure offshore. Alternatively is what we call the investment um, plan. This is where you're going to contrib contribute monthly or lump sum investments. So the minimum requirement for a, 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 a monthly debit order is 300 Rand a month or a minimum lump sum is a thousand rand. So it's great for rand, what they call rand cost averaging and your views long term. And there are two companies that really, or two companies that are involved in this space uh, that, that offer um, offshore or foreign ETP, you can call them ETPs, exchange trade products. Georgia Bank is the primary issuer. They have eight. They've got five um, ETFs and three uh, ETNs. So, 
ETNs. And then BNB Paribas, they got uh, they, what they call uh, gurus. Um, they got ETNs, exchange traded notes, and you have exposure to Asia, Europe, the US, and world. But on the next slide, you'll see. You can look into more detail. As I said just now, you can see at the bottom here, that's page 11, but I've hidden some slides. What's happening here? The last few. Uh, but also, you know, everybody looks at what's happening recently. What about the four percent in seventy seven days? So this is a kind of uh, opportunity you've got, especially if you want to have exposure to offshore markets um, as a ran hedge. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm just say highlighting DBX trackers for you. Um, there's also the the the, the uh, Paribas gurus. There's five of them. These are ETNs. The difference mainly there is that. Uh, ETFs or collective investment schemes, um, and they're mainly based on, 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 on shares in that. ETNs as such are a bit more, um, uh, not so much equity orientated. Uh, there's different criteria. I'm not going to go into too much detail now with uh, the difference between the ETNs and ETFs. But uh, you can see the, the, the performance is there, very, very similar. Okay. And then um, we're talking about global unit trusts. And in this space, you want to buy dollar denominated unit trusts. Um, you can either have on, on our platform a uh, minimum investment is 500 rand or lump sum is 20,000. But these um, unit trust gives you exposure obviously to, to equities or listed property, variable instruments, multi class, but we're going to concentrate on the offshore funds. Uh, in the PSG space, we've got two funds. We've got PSG Global Equity. You see it's a uh, US dollar denominated. It is higher. For, for the person with higher risk, um, you can see it's totally 100% exposure. It doesn't pay out any um, um, the income, okay? Income distribution does not distribute, it really obviously invest. But you also can see the, the minimum requirement, 5,000 power, sorry, $5,000. So, um, you know, less than that, it's not, it's not viable. Okay, and then we also got uh, the, the PSG Global Flexible Fund. This concentrates more on, on a, you call it a, um, a multi-asset approach. So we're talking about global equity, bond, and money markets. Um, it's also from a moderate to a high um, risk profile. Again, 100% exposure, and again, 5,000. So this is just two, but if you, if you, if you want to look at more um, on our website, and I've, I've added the, the link for you guys, um, is what we call the funds A to Z. And I've added in the slides in the sense that, uh, because time constraints, it's a three-step process. Yeah, you'll select the categories first of all. Select the categories, so in this situation, I'm looking at all equity, all multi-asset, and geographic location, I'm selecting global, which is just 100% off, offshore, or worldwide, it's, it's local and offshore. Okay, so that'll be the first step. Select different categories. Secondly, uh, once you've got that list, uh, you'll select which funds you want to compare against. Okay, and then the third step, obviously, you compare, do a further analysis, and then choose and then buy. Okay, so this is a, another way to get started by choosing those funds. Um, then we talk about the third uh, way of getting, taking your money offshore, having exposure offshore, and that's by opening up an offshore um investment account. So first of all, we've got what we call a offshore allowance, using offshore allowance. But, <coughs> excuse me. So it's a trading account offshore, uh, having an offshore allowance. Um, first of all, you exposure to 35, excuse me, I've got a frog in my foot here. You have direct exposure to 35 markets offshore. And if you think of South African, the JSC, it's got 450 companies, 450 shares listed. The New York Stock Exchange, which is only one, com uh, one exchange, it's over 8,000 uh, listed companies. So um, obviously the market gets much bigger when you're going offshore. But all these, when you, when you open up an offshore account, uh, you can um, elect what currencies um, you want to be trading in and things like that. So it's all these different markets, number one. Secondly, all these different currencies. Can you see how you diversify? 
So that's a one way of doing it. You can choose to uh, do it yourself or um, you can have a portfolio uh, constructed for you um, based on global shares as well as ETFs. Okay. Um, if you feel that you do not have enough knowledge or do not feel confident enough to do it yourself, you can appoint a, a team of Sure, this is where you want to um, use the proceeds of your investment offshore, maybe to fund your children's education, you want to retire overseas sometime, you travel extensively. This is what you'd be Rand per year. This is if you don't want to repatriate your money back to South Africa. Option one does not require a tax clearance from, from the Reserve Bank. So you allowed to take a million rand offshore every year without having to go through the process of getting tax clearance. You want to take more than that every year, you can invest up to 10 million in offshore shares. Okay. Uh, again, this is the objective is not to repatriate your funds back very soon. Um, in this situation, you do require a SARS tax clearance certificate and this tax certificate um, is, is quite um, unique in the sense that it must include the SARS logo as well as a specified uh, watermark. That's number one. And number two, you must also understand that this tax clearance doesn't last forever. You have to use it within 12 months on, from the date indicated on that, on that certificate. And uh, PSG Wealth, we, we we're there to help you uh, in that process too. Okay. Um, then the third option is that if you don't want to take your, or you've exhausted that, your offshore allowance and you're looking at taking more money offshore, number one, um, or alternatively, you had your investments in a trust or in a company or in a partnership, for example, investment club, as an investment club, you want to take your money offshore, then you have to use option three, which is PSG assets swap facility. It's our asset swap facility. Um, you, there's no limitations. You can take as many as much money as you want offshore. There are minimums, minimums however. We're talking about 5,000 pounds or the rand equivalent. Uh, we're talking about 21 rand to the pound. So we're talking about more than 100,000 rand. So this is not for everyone. It also applies to the offshore allowance, a minimum of 100,000 plus. If you take 100,000 divided by the dollar exchange rate, you're going to get a few thousand dollars. So you're, you're, you're limited with... Um, opportunities offshore. So from economic, or make it economically viable, that's why we ask for more than 100,000. From a fees point of view, um, obviously different fees, you can look at this 1% 1, 1 brokerage of a minimum of 25 pounds. We trade through um, through SOCGEN. Um, you can see this all the different criteria. Clearing and custody fee, 13 pounds, stamp duty. Um, there's a PTM levy, a PTM levy. Um, this is the um, I remember rightly, let me get to my notes here. It's the panel of takeovers and mergers uh, levy. It's like some very similar to the JSC's uh, investor protection levy, the levy that you pay on every transaction. I have over 10,000 pounds transactions. Okay. Um, you can see all the different costs. And obviously, there are all the different um, currencies. Um, there's these involved there too. How do we get started? How do I know what shares to buy offshore? So this is the biggest challenge for most people. As I said, the, the uh, JSC 450, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, more than 8,000. On uh, on our daily newsletter, our daily investment update that we send out, some of you might have seen this before, we give a guideline. This is what we what we uh, look at as PSG, uh, our offshore equities. So this, this is a starting point I suggest you guys look at. These are the stocks that we, we, we're looking at as a guideline. But um, I find useful, I use a program called VectorVest. Many, many of you also use it. I know there's quite a few regulars on this. VectorVest is a great little program. It's an American program. Yes, you have to subscribe to it. Um, it's a fundamental package as well as a technical package. Um, I have access to the South African database as well as I've chosen the American database. But I like it, number one, is I can scan the market based on certain criteria. So this is what I did yesterday. It spits out a list, a list of stocks for me. So I can see, okay, this is Tyson Foods. That was the price uh, um, yesterday. Uh, so it'll be Monday's close. Um, the system, it says, with the close at $67, $67 uh, 
the system values the company at eighty eight dollars eighty. So there's value there. So this is a, a starting point. So as I say, it's a big time saver. I like to scan the market. Also find it really useful. Gives you fundamental analysis. Um, goes into more detail, but also gives you a technical. Uh, graphs and things like that, which you can um, use. It helps you make a very informed decision. If you don't want to go that route, obviously um, you can just take that list, our daily investment update, go to Google uh, uh, Google Finance, there's a link at the bottom here, Google Finance, and go look at the individual companies. So it will still give you the uh, fundamentals on the company and limited technicals to help you make informed decisions. So those are some of the tools I suggest that you guys can use. Here's a quote from Barry uh, Rifflitz. Um, he's a, he's a um, if I remember rightly, let me get my notes again. Um, Barry is a commentator on CNBC and obviously the street and things like that. He's an author, newspaper columnist. But only a variety of asset classes means that, it's, that some part of your portfolio will be doing well when the cyclical turmoil arises. And there's been a lot of talk about uh, 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 turmoil coming this year. A broadly diversified portfolio includes large capitalization stocks, so it's big blue chip shares, small caps, as well as emerging. Now, obviously, I put in brackets there, offshore. So you want to have offshore exposure as fixed income, real estate, and commodities. So that's just a quote regarding um, as, as different um, asset classes as a form of diversification. So going offshore and things like that, investing offshore, what will this do? What are the benefits? Um, the whole idea here is that it offers a hedge for people who fear political and social unrest, and I know quite a few people are worried about that. But more, more importantly, it offers you ge geographical diversification of your investment portfolio. Um, I find more importantly, it offers you investment opportunities not available here in South Africa. Um, and that's what I find useful with um, the Vectorvest programs. I can look at different industries, uh, be it bio bio uh, biotechnology, um, just, just on the ETP side, the exchange traded fund side, or exchange traded product side, there are funds that are investing in sectors that are not available yet in South Africa. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoins, and that kind of stuff, and all the people doing the, the development around uh, the, that scenario. Um, there's people, there's, there's ETFs involved in gaming, online gaming, so companies that are involved in developing games, and it's a big trend. So those things are not yet available yet in South Africa. But also look at things like um, social media. You know, imagine being able to invest in just Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter and those kind of stuff. Things like Apple. You know, I'm an Apple fan. Um, just being able to invest in, the, in your products that you believe in. But also, obviously, the benefits of investing offshore, as I mentioned just now, is saving money for future expenses, be it your children's education, you want to send them to, your, to a foreign university, be it in the States or the UK. Or the UK. You travel extensively, you want to have access to your funds offshore. Um, you might be planning to retire overseas. So all these kind of um, benefits would accrue to you if you've got an offshore uh, account. So some of you might have a lot of questions. You might be saying, yeah, great idea, but or, um, you know, I've anticipated some of your questions. The biggest thing here is what are the, the disadvantages? Of investing offshore. So the big thing is, yes, uh, investing offshore can be rather daunting. You're dealing with volatile markets, number one, and also, more importantly, you're dealing with volatile currencies. There's also a lot of events unknown to you as an individual investor. So, yeah, it's, it's for more the advanced investor. So if I don't look at the novice, intermediate, advanced investor, Going, going directly offshore would be more for the advanced investor, someone who's got a portfolio here already and wants to diversify. But remember, as a novice investor, start with your ETPs and your unit trust and then from there, build up. Um, investing offshore requires a huge appetite for risk, time to watch the markets, and thirdly, obviously, expert knowledge of the markets, number one, and number two, the trading processes. I suggest is that seek the advice of the financial advisor. And uh, this link here, by the way, will take you through to on our webpage where you'll be able to find a financial advisor that specializes uh, by investing offshore. So uh, set up a meeting, get discuss it, discuss your needs with, with the financial advisor. And then obviously developed economies have a much lower interest rate than South Africa. So, you know, just on the on the income side or the, uh, just lying in cash, uh, your investment might grow much slower. Be aware of those kind of things. And then the big, the big thing for a lot of people is it requires a significant chunk of funds to invest offshore. As I say, minimum of five thousand pounds 
or minimum of at least 100,000 rent. So those are some of the disadvantages. But I still believe the advantages far away the disadvantages. And it's something you might be also considering, yeah, what about the rent? Now, I just want to stress the important thing here. We are not talking about investing offshore because of the rent. I mentioned it earlier this morning that some of you might be worried about it. Um, investing offshore is not because you want to play the market by bidding on currency fluctuations. You want to rent hedge um, elements rather go buy currency futures or go buy dollars. You know, take your money offshore and buy dollars. That's a rent hedge. So here's a, a, a chart, inverse a chart of the rent. So uh, we're going from six rand here to, seven, so to 17 rand. And recently you can see it's, it's, it's strengthened. So we're still way below those moving averages. We're still long term showing a rand weakness. But yeah, this recent law, call it a, 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 a rally, highlights for your opportunity where, uh, yeah, long term might get weaken again. Opportunity, maybe you take off money offshore again. But I want to stress, it's not the rand. Okay, why you want to go offshore? You want to go offshore because you want to diversify your portfolio, the risk geographically, number one, and also number two, you want to take advantages of opportunities not available in South Africa. Okay, I hope that's, that message come across. So as a quote from Barry again, the beauty of diversification is, you know, it's, it's all about uh, uh, as close, uh, sorry, is it's about as close as you can get to a free lunch in investing. So um, it's just spreading that risk around. It's not about making money, it's avoiding uh, capital losses. Okay, so let's see what questions you guys have got. I hope you found this informative. Cool. Okay, back on what questions you guys have got. Levina, how is it is to open an offshore account, bank, bank account, and what may uh, be a, some recommendations you have? Levina, I don't know about opening up an offshore bank account. Um, that I'm not so sure of. Or opening up an offshore trading account, you do it through PSG, and we trade through our partners in, in, in the UK or through Sockchain, which is a big uh, company. I don't know about the bank account. I can't really answer that one. Um, here's a question from Gerard. What is one... What is one would like to trade options on the New York Stock Exchange? Um, I'm not 100 percent sure your question is, Gerard. What is one way? What, what options? Um, you have to speak to a broker that deals with options. Unfortunately, we don't trade options. Yeah. Um, why does PSG not include trade in Indian Stock Exchange? Um, I wouldn't have to come back to you with that question, Samaya. Um, the 35 markets uh, alternative. Okay, I'll have to come back to you on that question also. By this, but there are a lot of other stock exchanges also we have not included. Quivers, maybe this is more a question for my tax advisor, but quickly explain tax implications of investing offshore, double taxation. Uh, yeah, remember tax, you only tax on profits if you, t if you sell. Uh, that's number one. So be aware of that kind of stuff. Um, and also when you do open up a, a, a offshore account, you have to declare what they call FATCA, especially with American markets and things like that. But um, yeah, I think it's more question for your tax advisor, Quibus, and uh, the taxation. Um, question here from Estelle, can you withdraw money from your PSG offshore account in other countries? Um, that's again, I would suggest you link that your, your, your offshore accounts to a bank account, and then I wouldn't know how you do it from there. Um, I'll have to find out for you. Good questions. Uh, you guys make me think. <laughs> okay. France, uh, regarding the link to financial advisors, uh, also features somewhere on the PSG online website. Uh, yes, um, contact us. That's where I linked it to, and from there you can find the link to the uh, advisors. Question here from Mike Toy: uh, Why are certain options not recommended if one wants to potentially bring back the money to South Africa? Why are certain options not recommended if one wants to potentially bring money back to South Africa? 
Um, Mike, I'm not 100% sure of your question. What or what options you're talking about? <laughs> um, sorry, I'll have to come back to you on, on email through that one. Alka, um, what percentage of one's return does one have to anticipate losing to fees? Um, so as I say, offshore fees is about 1%. So um, uh, maybe fees is just part of the game. Obviously, that's why the, the bigger the transaction, the cheaper it becomes. Um, Mandy, um, how do you suggest one divides one's investment between property and equity? Would you go direct investing into property? Uh, as in physical fixed property, Mandy, I'm not 100% sure. Um, if you're looking at offshore, um, you know, listed property, um, difficult one. Again, speak to your financial advisor. You know, I'm, not, I can't, I'm not allowed to give financial advice on this platform. Um, what do financial visas entail and at what rate? So Maya, you need to get all of the advisors and, and speak to them themselves. Um, each one is different, but um, um, you're paying for advice and uh, it, it's, it's better to, to have advice and not lose money. Um, great questions, guys. Thanks a lot. What is the, uh, the additional fee lay implication of trading? I'm not 100% sure on that question either. What's the, the implication of a fee structure? Uh, offshore platform, um, it's 1%. If you're going to trade shares offshore, Jan, um, unfortunately, do not do you not know what would be the underlying um, constituents of the portfolio, the Catalyst Global Property Fund. Um, best thing to do is go to the website, use that PhD um, funds A to Z, get down to the facts, to the to the um, uh, facts, uh, the detailed fact sheets about the company, and that will display more information about it for you. Okay, pleasure, Philip. Okay. Like those, all the questions coming through. Awesome, guys. So uh, just quickly um, to summarize it for you guys. Um, what you want to get? What I want you to get from this presentation, as such, is people invest offshore for many different reasons. Obviously, financial circumstances, your dreams, your fears, um, the plans for the future. But um, you know, saying that, achieving your goals is directly dependent on having investment strategy. Um, that takes these personal factors into account. So your risk profile, how much fund you're taking offshore, time and things like that. So that's your mistake in consideration. So just remember, you have three options. You know, as a novice, I suggest start with exchange traded uh, products, local stuff, um, and then um, obviously move towards the global unit trust and ultimately, ultimately as a advanced investor, look at opening up an offshore trading account. Yeah, so I hope you found benefits from this. Where do we take it from here? Uh, what's the next steps? Uh, if you click on um, this link here, it'll take you to information. Department and there are their contact numbers. As I mentioned right in the beginning, um, the PDF as well as the recording will be sent out to you guys. Um, I really appreciate you, you can give me some some feedback. Complete the uh, the survey that's in in the follow up. Uh, give me some some indication where you guys want more help and things like that. Just quickly, quick um, next week we're discussing the five pros and cons about investing and trading. Um, so if you look at in being an investor or trader or both. Uh, we'll look at the pros and cons. The week after that, we're talking about um, is choice and flexibility critical to your investment outcomes? Um, and in, the, in three weeks or three weeks' time, just understand, just be aware that some of you guys have, uh, realize that every Wednesday we have a webinar on the 25th, 20, sorry, 27th of April. It's a public holiday. Um, so I moved this to one day before, to the, 20, to the 26th of April. And yeah, we're talking about a disciplined investing, investment approach that comes with tax benefits. Okay, so guys, from my side, I hope you've enjoyed this webinar. You found it beneficial. Um, I haven't got too much over time today, so um, I appreciate your participation. 
And until next week, all the best. Keep well. Um, there's my contact details. If you want to ask me, ask me any more questions, um, by email, seanvdb at phg.co.za. Until next week, enjoy, enjoy your day um, and keep well. All the best. Bye for now.